Hey guys, a big welcome to the Budget 4x4 Live, another episode. Man, I've been waiting so long to get back to you guys, but I'm so glad to be back. Um, so yeah, I thought today, let's make it a very special episode. Let's talk about the Jarrows, like everything about them. Reliability, how comfortable they are, our spares around, how affordable are they. Literally everything you need to know, whether you're in the market for a Pajero and you're not sure how good it really is, or whether you're already a Pajero owner, just to be reminded of what a good car you bought. So yeah guys, let's get into this episode and run you through everything you need to know about Pajeros and whether you should buy one. Let's get into it. Alrighty, first things first, and this is probably the biggest subject I'm going to talk about today, is reliability. Now, I've recently put up a call on YouTube just for Pajero owners to decide why they basically bought a Pajero. And as you can see, with no doubt in my mind, the biggest factor was reliability. So yeah guys, today's video is mainly going to be focusing on the diesel engines, specifically the 4M41, uh, which is the common rail that started in 2006. I don't really know about the petrol motors, but I think they are very reliable as well, but they will be thirsty, all right? So if you want something that is reliable and it's good on fuel, I highly recommend you go with the diesel because it's been around for a long time as well. To be exact, I think it's been around for over 20 years, the 3.2 liter. Um, basically, I had a quick look on Google, correct me if I'm wrong, but they started with the 4M40 or the 3.2 liter in 2002 and 2006 they updated the motor to the 4m41 which is basically the common rail my car is a 2006 so it's one of the first ones with the common rail diesel and honestly it is great i've currently got 270,000 kilometers on it and it's going really strong another good thing about these motors is they are very good with tuning as well and if you have a look on Ultimate Diesel's website um, or YouTube channel, you can actually go through all the vehicles and you'll be surprised that the Pajero is one of the cars that makes the highest power. And there's a good reason for it. It's still on the factory limits, plus it is, you know, a good motor. It's a big motor, it's a 3.2 diesel. But if you take the 3.2 liter of the Ford Ranger, this car makes way more torque, way more power. So that is pretty good and it's still safe. And also, a lot of Pedreros out there, if you're on the Facebook page, if you're asking how many Ks can you go, um, I mean, people have reached a million kilometers. There's actually a YouTube video on there, I'll link it in the description below, of a, um, a lady that has cracked a million kilometers in, a, I think it was 2008 Pajero, but it was an NS as well with the 3.2 liter diesel. Same engine, same drive line, same gearbox. So, there you go. That is awesome and that is probably one of the biggest reasons I bought the Pajero as well just for that reliability and if you're gonna go out in the market and you see a car or well a Pajero with 300,000 kilometers on it well if it's been maintained then there's absolutely no reason you need to be afraid to buy the car obviously do your homework before you buy a car and yeah if it has problems don't blame me for it just make sure it's been maintained um, but yeah, if it's been looked after like this engine has, then you have absolutely will have no worries at all um, if you keep up to maintenance. So yeah, that is a big plus for me. It is probably worth mentioning as well, the NS Pajero came with the Jatco gearbox and later models like the NT Pajero has got the ASIM gearbox. Um, apparently it's better. Um, I don't really know, but my gearbox has been good so far. And like I said, the million kilometer Pajero also had the Jatco gearbox so I think if you just look after it it will look after you essentially but failures do happen you you don't really know why sometimes um, but yeah it's just one of those things but no worries so far but yeah basically it's throughout the years they upgraded the turbo the manifold on the NT as well a few other small bits and pieces um, it goes NS NT NW NX Pajero pretty sure so yeah, basically they just made a facelift on the car and a few other small bits and pieces on the engine and just to make it a tiny bit better. I'm not 100% sure if it's got a new head um, in the NT versions, but yeah, 
I would just recommend doing your research if, if you want to know all the small bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, essentially it's the same 3.2 that's just had a tiny bit of upgrades over the years. Um, but yeah, it's been a long, around for a long time. So that just tells you that it's reliable and um, you're going to be happy with it. It's also very fuel efficient. Now with the tune, I'm going to get around 10 liters per 100 on the highway and about 12 in the city. Um, so that is pretty good. And yeah, can't complain. Alrighty, let's talk about comfort. All right, now one of the first things that you notice when you're in a Pajero, there's heaps of room. Like it's nice and big. It's not too big like a Land Cruiser, but it's also not very small like a Pajero Sport, for example. Um, so yeah, it, there's definitely um, heaps of room for your feet. Tall people can definitely sit in here as well. So yeah, that wouldn't be a drama at all. In terms of the factory seats, um, I don't know, that's sort of personal preference. It's not a soft seat, it's not a hard seat, it's sort of in between for me. But it's definitely comfortable for three hour drives. Um, I haven't done a drive longer than that all at once before. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely very comfortable, well for me at least. Let's talk about the features. So obviously this is a upgraded um, cheap head unit. So normally it's uh, all factory, it doesn't really come with uh, many features at all. Um, so I highly recommend getting the screen. At the end of the video, um, you can watch this um, installation if you're keen on doing this yourself. But yeah, all the other bits and pieces, it's uh, very nice and modern. Like you can see, I added this as well. Normally it's black, um, so I just bought it off a higher spec car, put it in mine, so it's nice and bling! <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much all, all it is to it. Um, this is from Norsha Engineering, just to put my phone in there. Throttle controller and a few bits of USB ports and everything. From standard, that doesn't come with it. It's like a card slot and just a 12 volt socket. So yes, if you want to make it a bit more modern, I'd say just add these features and you'd be more than happy, I'd say. Um, but yeah, in the long wheelbase as well, there's heaps of room at the back and even in the short wheelbase as well, it's there's heaps of room at the back. Like people sit there, it feels like you're on a spaceship <laughs> kind of thing. Um, it actually feels there's more room at the back than it is in front. So yeah, short wheelbase is really good and um, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's not bad. It's, it's definitely better than a Germany. Just uh, leave it at that. I mean, it also comes with the basic controls such as cruise control. Oh man, that is so nice having cruise control. It's, <laughs> oh man, I used to have cars with, with no cruise control. And I'll tell you what, this is definitely a luxury and um, I absolutely love it. But yeah, just a normal phone holder there, that really helps as well. But most of the time I link it to my head unit. I just want to do maps, those sort of things. It's got a sensor console, which is good as well, um, just for, you know, having that comfort while driving. It's also got these bars. If you're going serious off-roading and you want to hold onto something, it's right there. So yeah, that is basically it, I reckon, that I can tell you. As always, if you have any questions, just drop it down below. And yeah, if I didn't get to the question that you have, um, just pop it there and I'll answer it for you. Let's get on to the next one. Alrighty, so let's talk about affordability now. Um, this is something that varies a lot, and um, but basically, I'll tell you what I paid for this car. It was stock. I paid twenty thousand dollars, so that is sort of up there, but not really. Um, I'm pretty much sure you're going to be paying more for short wheelbase Pajeros and then long wheelbase. I mean, I had a quick look on Marketplace and I saw one for. $12,000, like a long wheelbase, um, it's got 200, you know, almost 250,000 on it, but $12,000 guys, like, that is an absolute bargain. If you're in the market, I definitely recommend snatching this one up, um, because it looks good, and yeah, it's, yeah, I don't know, just go check it out, because $12,000, it's an absolute steal, so hurry up before that one sells. But yeah, in general, I would say, if you're looking for a Pajero, 
uh, with just over 200,000 kilometers, you'd be looking about 20 to $25,000, all right? And then if you're looking at Pajero's under 100,000 kilometers, prices can go up to $40,000, which is really not a lot. I mean, for the car that you get, it's, it does have the reliability, it does have comfort, you know, all the really good stuff. So I would definitely recommend buying Pajero's if you're looking for a family size car, and um, you know, going off-road as well. We'll get in, into off-road in just a sec. Um, but yeah, I mean, all around, it's a really good car and I definitely recommend it. To be fair, it's it's really not that much at all that I spend on the car. So I reckon it's very, very good value for money. And um, I reckon you guys would think the same. All right, let's quickly talk about towing. Now, if you want to buy this car with the purpose of having a small trailer, uh, you can definitely do that. The car can tow up to two and a half ton for a short wheelbase, and I think for a long wheelbase, it's about three ton, uh, which is sort of normal, standard. Um, so yeah, that is very good in the sense of having a short wheelbase, towing a small trailer like I did. It worked very well, and it does, definitely has the power for it. Whereas if you want to buy sort of like a Jimny again or a smaller you know two-door car and you're planning on doing a trailer I definitely don't recommend it the car is going to struggle a lot if it's petrol and it's just going to be very harsh on the transmission as well so if you want to tow this is the one for you also guys if you ever get idiots throwing out their trash in the bush please be the better person and just pick it up for them um, otherwise you know this is the reason why parks get closed down because of people like this. So yeah, I'm very annoyed. Please don't let it in the bush, guys. Come on, pick it up, take it home, or just, you know, just don't dump it, all right? Cheers. Alrighty guys, so the big question, capability. Are Pajero's soccer mum cars or are they good off-roaders? Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Basically the car is independent suspension all around. And so as you can see, um, you know, there's no solid axles, which is a letdown in some cases because the car doesn't have heaps of flex. And um, so basically it's relying on the traction control that the car has. So essentially when the one wheel spins, that's going to lock and the tire that has traction is going to move forward and that really makes this car very um, capable off-road. Unfortunately today I'm not really at you know a place where I can do some hardcore off-roading but basically what I've done is a 2 inch lift and 32 inch tires and that has got me um, many places. I've done Hennessy Hills at Glass House Mountains. That was probably my toughest challenge being that the car is unlocked and it has an open div at the rear. Um, you know, I was definitely relying on traction control to get me up those ruts and it was very steep But yeah, it got me up there. No worries. Um, so yeah, definitely I would say it is a capable car if you want to make it even more capable I mean, obviously you can always add a locker in the rear Let me just add some models do come with a factory rear locker So definitely if you want to go off-road if you plan to do some tougher tracks Definitely look for Pajero that comes with the locker already just so you can save some money with that but yeah eventually i will add a locker to my car just to go that extra mile i probably wouldn't tackle you know serious stuff um, but the locker will definitely make that the car walks through it instead of going through the obstacle getting stuck waiting for traction control to kick in go forward waiting for it to kick in go forward that sort of thing whereas if it's a locker you're just going to walk through so it's just going to make things easier i would say and obviously more capable. Another thing about the Pajero is because it's independent suspension front and rear, it is very comfortable um, off-road. So that is another bonus. It's gonna absorb the obstacles very well. And um, yeah, it's overall just a very comfortable drive off-road.
So definitely if you're just say, you know, you want to take out your family to the bush, you want to go on some trips, um, you just want to do some gravel roads and some fun off-roading but not very serious stuff, then this is definitely the car for you. If you want to tackle, you know, your super serious stuff, then I wouldn't bother buying this car. I would just go out, buy a Land Cruiser that has solid axles, probably say 105 series um, or patrols. Don't know how reliable they are though, but solid axles all right solid axle vehicles if you want to do super serious stuff i mean there's there's guys that as make the pajeros very capable you can get a four inch lift for them and you can also you know add 35 inch tires you can twin lock them then obviously there's no doubt in my mind it's going to walk up some stuff you wouldn't believe but yeah just to put in perspective just for the average guy that wants to go out tackle some fun stuff but not too serious the Pajero will do that definitely. Uh, it's also a very strong component. Um, it's a solid gearbox, solid drive line, and the CVs are also nice and thick as well. So I haven't snapped anything yet. I don't know how to be honest because I've put it through its paces a lot, and um, yeah, it's just driving me home every time. Touch wood. I just touched the. Um, the tree there just to you know be safe <laughs> ultimately guys it's a it's a great off-roader it's um especially on the beach like it's it's meant for that sort of stuff you know going down the beach doing the desert that sort of things climbing up mountains um but yeah it's not for stupid things i would say uh, but yeah that's basically the off-road side of it and i am super happy about it and um yeah it's uh it's done all the things i wanted it to do so it's a plus for me Another topic worth mentioning is also parts. Like if you break something, uh, will you be able to find parts for it now that they stopped making the Pajero in I think 2021 uh, was the last production series of the Pajeros. Um, but yeah, my answer to that question is there will always be spares available, at least in Australia. Not sure about other countries, but in Australia, because the Pajero comes from, you know, 2006 onwards, the Gen 4, like, there's definitely going to be the spares available. Even if you jump on Marketplace, just search Pajero Rec, you'll see all the results that come there. So, yeah, happy days. Parts will be available. And, uh, yeah, you'll be a happy camper when you go out and know that you'll be right. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, that is a wrap-up for today's video. Thank you so much for joining in. And hopefully I answered most of your questions that you have. But if I didn't, make sure to drop it down in the comments below. And I'll get to each and every one of them. But yeah, ultimately, are Pajeros worth buying? The answer is yes. And I can comfortably say that for all these reasons that I just told you. So yeah, thanks guys. Have a good one. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.